One of the tools that I keep using more is Tally Forms. I talked about it on a previous video on this channel, but I wanted to dive a bit deeper and compare it to another form builder that I use a lot, Airtable Forms. They both can be good tools to use, but like any tool, they have their time and place. So without further ado, let's jump into each of these form builders and see when are the best times to use each of them. To get started, I'm gonna use a template that I've shown in a different video on this channel. That template is the Airtable CRM template. If you're interested in learning more about this specific template, you can learn more in the description of this video. The nice thing about Airtable forms is that they're just a different view in Airtable. So as you can see, I have all the fields in a standard grid view in Airtable, but also have this form view that essentially sits on top of all of this data. Since the form just molds to whatever fields you have in Airtable, I typically start by just creating the fields with a short form field name and then create the form view from that. Airtable will automatically populate the fields when you create the form view. You can then remove certain fields from the form if you wish. As you can see in the people form, I've removed status, interactions, and send date because they're irrelevant to the data we wanna add via this form. Once you've decided which field should be in the form, you can change them into questions without changing the field name. For example, I could have what is their first name as the question in this form and still have first name be the title of the field. This is particularly nice for more marketing forms and forms that have larger questions in them. Having short field names makes creating automations and other integrations a bit easier too. More on that in a bit though. There are a few particular features in Airtable forms that I really like. First is automatic mapping to the fields. Since the field in question you're asking are directly linked in Airtable, you do not have to link the two together. It makes creating forms really quick in Airtable. Second is linked records. One of the most powerful features of Airtable in general is linked records and Airtable has carried that feature over to forms. This allows Airtable forms to be a bit more dynamic than some other form builders as you can create dynamic multi select or single select fields. For example, if you're asking for feedback on events that are in a different table in the same base, you can have only events in the last 30 days show up in your form and you don't have to be manually selecting those events. Just set a filter for the last 30 days and Airtable does the calculation for you. The feedback would also link to that particular event, which is really nice for keeping data organized. Third is ease of creation. Airtable forms are incredibly easy to create and can be whipped up in just a couple minutes. It's great for simple forms and if you're using a template form of any sort, you can duplicate that really easily. Having forms as a type of view in Airtable is really nice. What I don't like about Airtable forms is a few nitpicky items, but they can be significant for certain people. First downside is conditional questions and sections. There are conditional questions in Airtable, but you have to set up every individual question in Airtable forms to be conditional. There are no conditional sections or a way to make conditional questions in bulk. Not important for simple forms, but if you have some more complicated forms like an application form, that can really change your experience with Airtable forms. It's a lot more to set up in those instances. Second is branding. Yes, you can turn off the Airtable branding if you're using a paid plan on Airtable, but these forms are still very obviously Airtable branded when using them. Even just the ability to change fonts would be really nice. Last is long select answers. Once in a while you have questions where it's a single select or a multi-select and the answers you have aren't just yes or no, they're sentences. Examples might be, I felt this way in such and such, or yes, this is at this stage and this and that. If you have more longer multiple choice answers, they don't always show up nicely in Airtable forms. The selections are still visible, but text doesn't wrap like it would in other form builders. It just shows the dot, 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 and you have to hover over it and hold to be able to see the full selection. Again, a minor feature, but significant for some users of Airtable. That's the basics of Airtable forms. Let's now cover tally forms. For this example in tally forms, I'm gonna show you the start station accelerator application in tally. If you wanna learn more about the start station accelerator, you can check it out in a previous video of mine. A link to it is in the description. In Tally, you'll notice really quickly that this is not your standard form builder. Tally is like building a form as a web page. If you're used to Notion, Tally has a lot of similarities, particularly because Tally and Notion 
use the same type of block framework to create a page. You can see here that I was able to create a nice front description of this application, even with two columns, which is really nice. I was able to customize the fonts and it looks a lot like Notion on this first part. If you're someone that uses the keyboard shortcuts in Notion a lot, Tally is similar in that respect. To create a new question, you just hit the backslash key and you'll see all the different question types available. You can even create headings, bodies of text within a form, insert videos, and even pages to a form. This gives Tally a lot of dynamic properties. Within those properties and features, there's a few that I particularly like that I want to highlight about Tally. First, web page format. The web page formatting in Tally is a big deal. It takes some getting used to if you're used to more standard form builders like Google Forms or Airtable Forms, but the web page formatting in Tally allows you to have so much customization and create a really great experience for those interacting with your form. Related but different is design. As I mentioned earlier, I was able to change fonts, which a lot of form builders don't let you do. You can do a lot when it comes to the design of a Tally form. You can brand a form incredibly well in Tally to the point where it can integrate beautifully into other branded elements you might have on your website. It takes the user experience to a different level, especially with the ability to incorporate videos, images into the form as someone is filling out a form. Third is conditionals. I have to admit, originally I was skeptical about conditionals in Tally because they're pretty different. I've come around though, and they're really nice. You can make questions conditional and even particular answers conditional. So if you want to create a really dynamic form where potential answers shown depend on previous questions, you can do that in Tally. You still have to select which questions show individually for conditional questions and answers, but it's not a bad experience. It's as simple as checking which components should show when particular answers are given. So it's not bulk conditionals or sectional conditionals, but it's a good alternative. For what I don't like in Tally, there's a couple of features that stand out. The biggest inconvenience is mapping fields. You can see responses in Tally and Tally can integrate natively into other tools like Airtable or Notion without the need of Zapier. That's really nice. However, you have to map each individual field to the field and the tool that you are integrating. So if you have 10 questions in your Tally form, you have to map each of those 10 fields to the respective field in Airtable or Notion. It's not the end of the world, but it can be a bit cumbersome. One tip on this that I hinted at earlier is to keep your Airtable or Notion field names short. That way you can easily see what they are in Tally and map the field a bit quicker. Next is copy of responses. The copy of responses in Tally is nice for the right people. You can send customized and dynamic emails to people that respond to your form, but if you have a lot of conditional questions in a form, it's essentially impossible to just send a copy of the response cleanly. There's no toggle to just send responses just like there are in other tools. Those are the basics of Airtable forms and Tally forms, but when would you use each of them? The simple answer that I've landed on in the past month is that if you're creating a very simple internal form like adding people to a CRM, use an Airtable form. They're super quick to create and the form doesn't need to be this super polished, great experience. It just needs to be good and make sure everyone is communicating well. If you're creating a more complex form or a form that is used more externally, like to customers or clients, Tally is probably your answer. Tally is much more dynamic than Airtable forms and the cost of creating all this dynamicness in Tally is worth it if it's creating a wonderful user experience for important processes. The time cost of setting up a simple form in Tally isn't always worth it. The simple answer is predicated on if you're using Airtable as the place to manage data. If you're using Notion, Tally is your go-to form builder always because there is no native form builder in Notion. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a like. And if you're looking for more content like this video, you can check out other videos on this channel like this one here.